Breaking the Code, Times and Seasons, Part 5, Unfolding and Counteracting the Plot to Take Over. Introduction, Part 5. A.T. Jones, in his book, The Two Republics, pages 301 to 328, demonstrates that through a process of imitation, the Roman Catholic Church attempted to gain ascendancy over the world. From the time that the first Sunday law was enacted by Constantine in 321 AD and was followed by more rigid Sunday laws, the purpose to change the times and law by Lucifer through the bishops of Rome came to fruition. It lasted 1260 years and can be called the first papal supremacy from 538 AD to 1798 AD. Scene number one. The Way to Unfold the Plot This Part 5 study on times and seasons intends to unfold and counteract the plot of Lucifer to take over the whole world once more by giving his power and his authority to the Roman Catholic Church under a second papal supremacy which will last this time 1260 literal days. Revelation chapter 13 verses 2, 5, to six. The dragon, Satan, gave him his power and his seat, the holy see, and great authority, which would be Sunday keeping. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. The way to unfold and counteract this plot is by knowing Lucifer's devices and intents and by teaching the truth. Only the truth counteracts falsehood. Lucifer has already been given an opportunity to change the biblical calendar and is now organizing the last steps to take over the whole world. As shown in parts 1 to 4 of this study, the plot to overturn the Creator's government originated in Lucifer's mind in heaven while he was the guardian angel of the law in the most holy place. Although cast out of heaven by Michael the Prince, according to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verses 7 to 9, Lucifer has continued his warfare on earth where he has gained ascendancy over Adam and his race, taking away from him the dominion, the scepter, or daily, as represented in Daniel chapter 8, verses 11 to 13, chapter 11, verse 31, and chapter 12, verse 1, and ringing now on earth for nearly 6,000 years. As prophecy has foretold, Lucifer knows his time is short, and he is specifically targeting his attacks against the church. The pure woman in doctrines of Revelation chapter 12 verse 17, which keeps the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus. Scene number two, plot to take over. From the time that Lucifer rebelled in heaven and was cast out on the earth, he watched for a plan to take over the earth and establish his kingdom. After centuries of trials and errors from Babel to Babylon and from Medo-Persia to Rome, Lucifer has refined his strategic planning of finally establishing, number one, a theocracy government in imitation of Israel theocracy, which existed till Israel demanded a king under Samuel's rule as a judge. After God granted their request, the theocracy was dissolved. At his third coming, Christ will establish his kingdom on earth, and a new theocracy will be set up to last forever, referring to 1 Samuel chapter 8. Through the fourth beast, kingdom, government of Daniel chapter 7 verse 23, Lucifer accomplished the first part of his plan, the papacy. The second part of Lucifer's plan 
was a day of rest in imitation of the act of God in the original theocracy in instituting the observance of the seventh day Sabbath of rest, according to Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11. Through the papacy, the fourth beast, kingdom or government, as prophesied in Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, Lucifer accomplished the second part of his plan, Sunday observance. The third part of Lucifer's plan is a kingdom or government in imitation of the kingdom of God on earth. The laws being laws of the kingdom of God would necessarily have a religious character by supplying a day of rest for the purposes of devotion, prayers, supplications, and worship on the Lord's day. Through the papacy, the fourth beast, or kingdom or government, as prophesied in Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, Lucifer accomplished the third part of his plan, the Vatican. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia Online, the word Vatican derives from the Latin vates, which means tellers of the future. This name was the name given to a hillside on the west bank of the Tiber River in Rome because daily line up of fortune tellers used to hog their wares there to pass by on the street. In the 14th century, when the papacy was returned to Rome from Avignon, France, the present-day Vatican became the residence of the popes, and the word came to refer to the enclave in the middle of Rome that had become the seat of the Roman Catholic Church. The fourth part of his plan, a sovereign pontiff in imitation of the sovereign of the universe. It was by virtue of his office and authority as Pontifex Maximus or sovereign pontiff and not as emperor that the day was set apart to this use because it was the sole prerogative of the Pontifex Maximus in the pagan world to appoint holy days, calendar, in imitation of the sovereign of the universe. The title Pontifex Maximus has been used by the bishops of Rome for centuries. Through the papacy, the fourth beast, or kingdom, or government, as prophesied in Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, Lucifer accomplished the fourth part of his plan, the Pope, who is called Sovereign Pontiff. The fifth part of his plan is a calendar of appointed times in imitation of the calendar of the one only who can change times and seasons. At the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, the Sunday movement gained impetus when it was decreed that Easter would be celebrated on Sunday only in honor of Christ's resurrection and was to be observed by the whole Roman Empire. In Socrates' Ecclesiastical History, Book 1, Chapter 9, a letter confirms this action of the Council. It was again in imitation of the power of the Sovereign of the Universe to change the times and seasons, the calendar, according to Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. Through the papacy, the fourth beast, or kingdom, or government, as prophesied in Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, Lucifer accomplished the fifth part of his plan, a calendar of feast, Easter, Christmas, Virgin Mary worship, all the saints, and more. The sixth part of his plan is a church and state power, in imitation of the power granted to his church to fulfill his mission, that is, Christ's church and Christ's mission, following the Council of Laodicea in 363 to 364 AD, the Roman Catholic Church secured the power in later years to enforce the observance of Sunday and the abandonment of the Seventh-day Sabbath. In nothing did Constantine give the Church any such a power except in the Sunday Law. 
In this way, the church received help from the state for the furtherance of the ever ends, according to Neander, History of the Christian Religion and the Church, Section 3, Part 2, Division 3, Part 5. This, again, was in imitation of Israel theocracy when she was fully under God's government and was to depend on her divine king before she demanded an earthly king. In imitation, the bishops of Rome made themselves dependent on the Emperor Constantine to use the power of the state for the furtherance of their aims. Through the papacy, the fourth beast, or kingdom or government, as prophesied in Daniel chapter 7 verse 23, Lucifer accomplished the sixth part of his plan, a church on the state government power. The seventh part of Lucifer's plan, A.T. Jones rightly concludes on page 328 that the Roman Catholic Church started out with the determination to do it, she did it, and in this way she did it. And the theocritical leaders in the movement had the cruel courage to follow the steps onto the last, as illustrated in the horrors of the Inquisition during the fearful record of the dreary ages in which the bishopric of Rome was supreme over kings and nation. Through the papacy, the fourth beast or kingdom or government as prophesied in Daniel chapter 7 verse 23, Lucifer accomplished the seventh part of his plan, the Inquisition. Therefore, in a seven-part imitation series, Lucifer's plan was to establish a theocracy, namely the papacy, a day of rest, Sunday, a kingdom, a church and state government, the Vatican, a sovereign pontiff, the Pope, to appoint holy days, an appointment of holy days, Easter, Christmas, Virgin Mary, all day saints, a church and state power, which we find in the first papal supremacy for 1260 years from 538 to 1798 AD, thus accomplishing the prophecy of Daniel chapter 7 verse 25, and a second papal supremacy of 1260 days pointing to Daniel chapter 12 verses 7 to 13 and Revelation chapter 13 verse 5 still to come and a time of trouble and persecution as the Inquisition, pointing to Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 and Revelation chapter 12 verse 6 for 1260 years of the 538 to the 1798 AD era, and Daniel 12 and Revelation 13 under the National and International Sunday Law and a dead decree still to come. Scene number three, a strategic planning to counteract Lucifer's plot. What is important to study at this time of earth history is, number one, the strategic planning the creator of the universe has already started to execute in order to counteract Lucifer's plot to take over the earth. And number two, to understand all the steps his people must follow at this time in order for him to gain the final victory over Lucifer and establish his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. The Creator's strategic planning for these last days is the reversals of Lucifer's imitation by establishing number one, a theocracy based on the 144,000 the fit man of Leviticus 16, the first fruits, barley. A day of rest, number two, based on the biblical lunisolar barley harvest law calendation. Number three, a kingdom based on a royal priesthood after the order of Melchizedek or the firstborn. Number four, a sovereignty based on the sovereign of the universe who changes times and seasons. Number five, 
an appointment of holy days based on the feast of Leviticus chapter 23 and 25 and Numbers 28 and 29. A church and a power based on the separation of church and state, church on the Christ. A time of trouble and persecution based on the blessing of Daniel chapter 12 verse 13 and Revelation chapter 1 to chapter 3 promised to the overcomers. Scene number four, a strategic planning, phase number one, that started in 1844 and up to today. Today now is 2019. Number one, synchronism of 1844, not a delay, but a mistake of interpretation. The event was the 2300-day prophecy of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 14, explained in chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, as well as Revelation, chapter 14, the anti-typical day of atonement of October 22, 1844, which brought about the Looney Solar Bali Harvest Calendar restored. The three angels' messages was given, but not received. The hour of judgment, not a delay of the second coming as the pioneers mistakenly interpreted it, the sanctuary to be the earth. The appointed times and the calendar of his government were actually restored at that time. Continuing with scene four, synchronism phase one. Number two, synchronism of 1869. The event was the health reform restored. The law of the statutes was given to guard the Ten Commandments. The statutes are part of the moral law of his government and they were being restored through the health reform. Number three, synchronism of 1888. The first delay of Christ's second coming because of insubordination and rebellion. The event, the moral law of commandments, statutes, and judgments in Galatians was rejected. The first delay of the second coming because of insubordination. In the ensuing years, building burned in Battle Creek and the church was shaken by the alpha of apostasy of Dr. Kellogg. The judgment was mingled with mercy. The fourth synchronism of 1889, the Sunday Law. The event, in consequence of the insubordination of 1888, A.D. Jones participated in a debate against the Sunday Law legislation proposed in 1889 by Senator Blair of the United States Senate and overruled the process, postponing events that could have brought the final movement leading to the second coming. Lucifer attempt was pushed back. Christ's army was not ready. The fifth synchronism of 1914 and World War I. The event, the reason for the war, the pen of inspiration is clear that because of God's people rebellion in 1888, the church will be air long on the earth and face many more wars and difficulties. The rejection of his law by his people brought judgment mingled with mercy. Number six, synchronism of 1929, the healing of the wound, according to Revelation chapter 13, verse 3, and I saw one of his heads as if it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. The event in 1929, Mussolini, the fascist leader of Italy, signed the Lateran Pact, which brought into being the Vatican City-State. Cardinal Gaspari, diplomat and politician in the Roman Curia, was the signatory of the Lateran Pact. He served as the Cardinal Secretary of State under Pope Benedict XV and Pope Pius XI. Pope Pius XI was the first sovereign of Vatican City from its creation as an independent state on February 11, 1929. Newspapers at the time even proclaimed the wound 
to the Vatican has yielded, as can be read in an article from the February 12, 1929 edition of the San Francisco Chronicle. The same story can be read in the Reno, Nevada State Journal of Tuesday, February 12, 1929. The New York Times, Tuesday, February 12, 1929, reads, the Pope is again an independent sovereign ruler, as he was throughout the Middle Ages, though his temporal realm established today is the most microscopic independent state in the world and probably the smallest in all history. Even Catholic newspapers reporting the event declared the wound to be healed by the Lateran Treaty. The Catholic advocate, published in Brisbane, Australia in April 18, 1929, commented on this event. Lucifer was permitted once more to give his authority to the papacy in preparation of the second papal supremacy. These calls were taken online. Number seven, synchronism of 1939. Second delay because of doubt. The event in the spring of 1939, the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists in Washington, D.C. set up a committee to examine the validity of October 22, 1844. After eight months of research, the committee acknowledged the validity of the date for the Great Day of Atonement in 1844 as being the 22nd of October, 1844. Continuing with the seventh synchronism of 1939, the second delay because of doubt. However, the study revealed the discrepancy between the biblical lunisolar barley harvest calendar used to ascertain the date of the 22nd of October, 1844, and the 70th Sabbath reckoning based on a Roman papal Gregorian calendar reckoning. The refusal to accept this error and publish it on the part of the committee and the leaders of the church at that time forced the church into 70 years of wilderness wandering, which takes us from 1939 to 2009. This report appears at the Adventist Research Center at Andrews University under the unrecognizable name, willingly or unwillingly, of the Grace Amadon Collection. His calendar and statutes of appointed times were put aside once more. Number eight, synchronism of World War II, 1939 to 1945. The event, the reason for the war, is the same reason as for World War I can be applied to World War II because of God's people rebellion in 1939. The church was to be here long on the earth and faced many more wars and difficulties. The 1950 era on the questions on doctrines, 1970 era of the dismissal of Desmond Ford and falling away of many leaders, 1980 era and abandonment of the sanctuary teaching, 1990 era and the introduction of the emerging church along with the Korean War, Vietnam War, Kuwait, Desert Storm War, Afghanistan War, War on Terrorism, and more. The judgments were still mingled with mercy. Number 9, Synchronism of 1995, third delay because of lack of faith. The event at the request of the President of the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in 1995, a committee of leaders of the General Conference and of Andrews University reopened and examined the 1939 report of the committee on the validity of October 22, 1844. After a brief perusal, some of the members saw the error in calendation of the Seventh-day Sabbath reckoning from the Luni solar calendar to the Gregorian calendar, but were sworn never to reveal this error. His calendar and statutes of appointed times were put aside once more. 
Number 10, synchronism, 2007 to 2015, third delay overruled. The event, however, in 2007, the creator overruled their decision by placing in the end of four women the most incredible revelation of the century, the biblical sanctuary calendar based on a loony solar barley harvest reckoning was restored by the Millerites with their calculation of the 10th day of the 7th month corresponding to October 22nd in 1844 as the Great Day of Atonement that year. The synchronisms and chronology of Daniel chapter 8 verse 14 and Daniel chapter 9 verses 24 to 27 prove the appointed times of the Creator of Leviticus 23 and 25 and Numbers chapter 28 and 29 is weekly, monthly, and yearly days of worship according to his system of calendation. Without a doubt, this was and is his final restoration, which will bring in the final test to the final generation. His calendar is a statute that is accepted presently by many all over the world, mainly by the lay people. Scene number five, strategic planning, phase number two, events reaching to the second coming. The 11th synchronism, the second papal supremacy brought in by a national Sunday law. Revelation chapter 13, verse three, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beast. Continuing with phase number two, the 11th synchronism, second papal supremacy brought in by a national Sunday law. What the future holds is described in Daniel chapter 12, Revelation chapter 13, the book of Esther, and the book The Great Controversy. The events described in these inspired books will culminate to fulfill a second papal supremacy which will last 1260 days or 42 months according to Daniel chapter 12 verse 7 and Revelation chapter 12 verse 14 and chapter 13 verse 5. These events can be chronologically enumerated in this order. God's people are ready. The 144,000 have been sealed and uphold his theocracy and leadership. The Roman Catholicism, Apostate Protestantism, and United States leaders unite. A legislation for a national Sunday law is proclaimed in the United States of America. A church and state government is established. The United States of America forego its constitution. A national Sunday law is imposed in the United States. This is the test for the living. Persecution on those who refuse to obey the Sunday law observance follows. An international Sunday law now is legislated, is imposed also all over the world. Persecution and death threats continue, imprisonments, loss of properties, and death. The kings or the chiefs of states from all over the world transfer the scepter power to the papacy. Probation closes. Mediation in the most holy place is over. The plagues are falling. The earth is under great destruction. An international death decree now is legislated. The voice of God gives the day and hour of Christ's second coming and the inheritance of the saints. The destruction of Babylon takes place. There is chaos on the earth. Christ appears in the cloud of glory. The wicked are destroyed by his glory. Righteous now ascend to heaven. The twelfth synchronism, phase three events reaching to the third coming. 
The earth lays fallow for a thousand years. This is her antitypical sabbatical year. Lucifer and his fallen angels wander on the earth with no one to tempt or harass. After the thousand years, Christ descends with the new Jerusalem and the righteous. The wicked come out of their grave, resurrected the same way as they went in. Lucifer arranges them into a great army. Lucifer and his army now attempt to take over the holy city. But fire from the glory of God comes from heaven and destroys them all and cleanses the earth. The earth is made new again and given to the righteous. The earth celebrates her antitypical jubilee as sin and sinners along with Lucifer and his fallen angels are destroyed for eternity and this sin or reflection will rise no more according to Nahum chapter 1 verse 9. Conclusion to part 5. The Greek Controversy, page 582. In seeking to cast contempt upon the divine statutes, Satan has perverted the doctrines of the Bible, and errors have thus become incorporated into the fate of thousands who profess to believe the scriptures. The last great conflict between truth and error is but the final struggle of the long-standing controversy concerning the law of God. Upon this battle we are now entering, a battle between the laws of man and the precepts of Jehovah, between the religion of the Bible and the religion of fable and tradition. From eternity, the Creator's strategic planning was to counteract sin and rebellion if it was ever to arise among his free created beings. The synchronisms and chronology proposed in this essay are based on biblical and spirit of prophecy events, which will get rid of Lucifer's rebellion and imitation of God's government as shown in the following last events. Continuing with Conclusion Part 5 and the strategic planning proposed by the Creator of Times and Season to get rid of Lucifer's rebellion and imitation of God's government. A theocracy based on the 144,000, the fit men of Leviticus 16, the first fruits, the barley. A day of rest based on the Biblical lunisolar barley harvest law calendation. A kingdom based on a royal priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, the priesthood of the firstborn, rather than the Aaronic priesthood. A sovereignty based on the sovereign of the universe who changes times and seasons. Appointed holy days based on the feast days of Leviticus 23, 25 and Numbers chapter 28 and 29. A church power based on the separation of church and state, a church under Christ. A time of trouble and persecution based on the blessings of Daniel 12 and Revelation chapters 1 to 3 promised to the overcomers. These words of inspiration can now be proclaimed from Revelation chapter 5 verse 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, for ever and ever. The Great Controversy, page 678. The Great Controversy is ended. Sin and sinners are no more. The entire universe is clean. One pulse of harmony and gladness beats through the vast creation. From him who created all flow life and light and gladness throughout the realms of illimitable space. From the minutest atom to the greatest world, all things animate and inanimate in their unshadowed beauty and perfect joy declare that God is love.
For further studies on the synchronisms and chronology of the last day events, please check my websites on the Sanctuary and Religious Liberty at numbers 1317.org, files 16 to 18 and 21 to 22, as well as fourwindspublication.org and 144,000teachers.org. Additional synchronism and chronological facts will be presented in parts 6 to 8.